Thank you so much for joining us live on Glutathione Authority. I would like to welcome Alan Ogden. Thank you. He is a pharmacologist. He has four degrees in nutrition. He has a degree in geriatric medicine and in energy medicine. And I am so grateful on this beautiful, practically summer day to have him in my kitchen. Yeah. How was, uh, how was your Mother's Day? Awesome. Thank you. And you? It was... <laughs> Oh, the first part of it was fantastic. The latter part of it could have been a little bit better. Right. <laughs> I yeah. did get a two-hour massage, thanks to my business partner. You're <laughs> it's not often that I get one of those. I've been having a little bit of lower back pain, and uh, I actually got to experience cupping for the first time yesterday. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, cool. And uh, I have some nice bruises on my back to prove it. I'm not going to show them because some of them are in unsightly places. <laughs> I'm not looking to moon my audience. But uh, it was really interesting, actually. Um, you lied. You said it doesn't hurt. It freaking hurts. <laughs> I think it depends because um, because my lower back is bothering me at the moment. Um, when she was pulling the cup tight, it was pulling on the muscles, and it was already sore. And so when she was pulling at the muscles, it yeah. was excruciating. Um, but what was really fascinating about it was she left them on for about 20 minutes, and after about five minutes of them being on my back, I was like, oh, look at that. I'm used to the pain. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's really. amazing. And I just, I totally had a moment where I thought about how many people live with daily pain and they totally don't think about it. They're just used to it. It's yeah. just a normal part just, of their lives. You become accustomed to pain and you just stop thinking about it. Yeah. Absolutely. And I totally did that after five minutes Yeah. yeah. of those things being on my back. And... It was so painful at first, I was having to breathe through it. Like it was really painful. I'm serious. Yeah. And after about five minutes, I was like, I could have fallen asleep. Yeah. It, it was it, it was it spectacular. Well, I think part of that is the relief, but uh, anyway, I'm very excited to be in your kitchen because I'm with this person who is trained as a pranic healer, trained in emotion code, body code, clinical hypnotherapy, and continues to educate herself continues to practice as well and in her practice continues to discover really cool neat things about how she can help people release trapped emotions trapped energies or things that might be attached to them energetically that is not uh, preventing them from living their best life so it's really cool um i love i love how uh it's evolved for you and i love watching you work on uh, and hearing people hearing people's stories after about how they didn't think they were ever going to be relieved of something and then they come and you know it's actually them that's doing the release right absolutely right? I, so, I do not take the credit and every time that a client tries to give me the credit I turn it back um, to them because really in all reality I specialize in asking the right questions to help you actually uh, get the answers that you need to support yourself, which is why I'm actually in a position to be able to support people who are dealing with addiction. Um, and I have a couple of clients that actually um, I'm working on that with them right now. And I've never had uh, addiction issues in my life. That's not something that I struggle with. I can pick something up and put it back down and I, I never get drawn back to it. Um, but because of the fact that I know that everybody has the answers that they need in order to be able to support themselves, all I have to do is ask the right questions and they surface the answers. And I think as a result of the fact that society has taught us that, um, that there is this higher power that has all the answers or our teacher has all the answers or our parents have all the answers, that somebody other than us has all the answers. Yeah. We have to look to a book or an authority or somebody else and I want you guys to understand that I am very much, you know, a believer in God and a higher power. And I'm not, you know, saying for two seconds that there isn't a higher power, but I very much believe that we also are a power in ourselves and that we are connected to God in the universe and that we can seek these answers for ourselves, that we don't have to necessarily find it in a book. And I found that when we actually turn to an authority, um, or look strictly intellectually to find the answers, we're actually very much impeding our expansion and the ability to find those answers. And it's about actually letting go of the intellect and you know, really looking at the subconscious mind or connecting through meditation or prayer to that higher power in order to be able to find those answers that you seek to get what you want. And it's really amazing that I'm talking about this because as a result of us seeking um, 
the higher power and other answers, we actually um, ended up coming or happening upon uh, the fact that optimizing your GSH topically is amazing for your skin. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what a cool thing. Because we never quit searching, we never quit asking questions, we never quit doing that. And uh, a few years ago, for those of you who remember, there was a product called Cetria Glutathione. Uh, I actually had sent that away and we did some experimentation. We wanted to make a glutathione skin cream uh, for, for many reasons and I'll get into those reasons in a minute. Anyway, we found out that molecular glutathione, so you can just keep this in mind, if you're buying a glutathione skin cream, molecular glutathione is not well absorbed. Now they'll say liposomal, they'll say it's absorbed they'll say all that stuff. If you go to PubMed and actually look up the actual research, you'll find that even though it is absorbed, it gets into the blood, it's immunological and physiological activity is almost zero at a cellular level. level. So if you're buying stuff that says glutathione and you're putting it on as a cream or a lotion or something like that, science doesn't back that up. However, when you use free form amino acids that should ring a bell with you people now that know about immunity, when we use free form amino acids and use them in a specific way um, and in a, a, in a formulation, there's a special formula that goes along with this, uh, there's, a, there's a water base that needs to go along with this, they are actually immediately absorbed by your skin. So why would you want to increase the glutathione in your skin. You're, well, an, esth you're an esthetician. <laughs> I actually have about 15 years experience um, as a skin therapist uh, before my concussion and becoming a hypnotherapist and energy healer. I specialized in the largest organ in the body, which is your skin. And uh, it's actually miraculous because in all of the research and the learning and the courses and the certifications that I did, over the 15 years that I was working in the industry, not once was I ever told that I had a thing called glutathione in my body and it actually helped my cells to repair themselves. So it's really spectacular because the things that we talked about in uh, school was speeding up your cell renewal rate. When you're 25 years old, your cell renewal rate starts to slow down and the, the way to actually help to speed that up is to exfoliate. So you take off the top layer of the skin, the epidermis, and it will force your cell renewal rate. So your body will produce new uh, skin cells at the dermal level to replace what you've just taken off. It's just like shaving the grass. It's when, you, when you go through and you mow the lawn, all of a sudden you'll find that it grows a little bit faster because it's signaling to the roots that they need to produce more. So it's a really spectacular way to help do that. And then of course, you know, there's stuff like pigmentation and, you know, hyperpigmentation, hypopigmentation, aging and stuff like that. And so we talk about how to protect the DNA and how UV rays obviously are actually invading the skin and we've got these free radicals. And so the body actually produces more melanocytes to try to repair the DNA. And so I learned that sun or sun tans that we actually have is our body actually being on high alert and actually showing that we have damage. So that's incredibly spectacular. And of course, you know, we learned about collagen and elastin. And as your collagen and elastin starts to slow down in production as you hit 30, uh, when you hit 30 years old, it slows down at about 1% a year. Then you'll get to your 40s and it'll drop again. You get to your 60s and it drops again. And of course, I'm sure you guys have noticed that men typically tend to age a little bit slower and the main reason for that is, is that they actually have a significant amount more sebum in their skin than women do, which means they produce more oils, which keeps their skin significantly more hydrated so they have more longevity. Um, so for women, it's really important to make sure that your skin is hydrated. But what's incredibly amazing that I've learned in this process, because I have all of this understanding about how the skin works and I've taken incredible care of my skin since I was um, young and before I even started aging. And this is a reason why um, I'm verging on 40 and I still look like I'm in my 20s and I get guys in their 20s hitting on me thinking I'm their age and they're super confused but not deterred when they find out <laughs> my <Yeah>. age. Um, <laughs> not deterred, undeterred. That each and every one of the cells in my skin 
is actually able to, to produce glutathione and actually already has glutathione in it. It's absolutely spectacular. So when you actually put it topically on the skin, the amino acids, each one of the cells is actually going to allow for those amino acids into the skin and optimize those cells. So those brand new live juicy cells that are being created on the dermal level will be created with more collagen, with more elastin, with a lot more of the ingredients that we need to have the neuroplasticity, to have all these beautiful, juicy, live, plump skin cells that just bounce back, which is exactly what we're looking for. So your elasticity is what allows for when you push on the skin for it to just bounce back. Your collagen is what makes your skin plump and juicy. So what's gonna happen is, is if you're actually doing this and you would wanna do it um, over about a month because your full uh, cycle, your skin cycle is about 28 days on somebody who is essentially in their prime, right? So you'll wanna do this for about a month and if you use it topically on the skin for that month, you will find that this, the skin that's now on the epidermis after that month will be significantly more hydrated, it will be significantly more plump and resilient and youthful looking, the actual coloration or um, melanocytes will be significantly more healthy because your body will be actually producing its natural skin colors as opposed to uh, the damaged skin that you're seeing. And it's really interesting because you remember how you were talking about how does the skin know to, how does the body know to stay sick? Yeah. It's the same thing with the skin. You have a vibration in your body as a result of the damage that's been done. The DNA, the melanocytes, because of the age that you're at and the damage, the years and years of damage that you've done, have programmed your melanocytes to actually overproduce melanin, which is why you'll have the same sunspot here for a really, really long time. If you topically take or put the glutathione on the skin, the precursor amino acids, what will actually happen is it will actually communicate to the cells and to the melanocytes to say, it's okay, you don't have to overproduce anymore. And then those sunspots will potentially diminish. So it's really, really spectacular because we've had a lot of people that have asked us questions over the years about whether they can lighten their skin using right. glutathione. And the answer to that is yes, unless you're Fijian or yeah, Jamaican yeah, yeah. Yeah. or black or... So if you do have occurrences of hyperpigmentation um, as a result of sun damage, you can absolutely repair um, the damage that's been done if you're nurturing the cells and creating new live juicy cells and they're being everything, they're getting everything that they need to repair themselves. Just like glutathione does internally to support the body rejuvenating and healing itself, the same thing will happen on a cellular level within the skin if you use it topically. So one of the, one of the things I wanted uh, to mention to people is how many, I know that there's lots of uh, young scientists out there that have taken a piece of glass, like an old Coke bottle or a magnifying glass or something like that, and you've actually got a sun, you know, a bit of sun coming through it, and you focus that on something like grass or weeds or leaves or whatever, and it starts a fire. Well, something very similar to that is actually happening with your skin when the sun is shining on you for long periods of time, and in particular times of the day when the sun's rays are more direct and more focused, something similar is happening, and what's happening is actually you're having proteins collapse in your skin. So though, as long as Harmony mentioned, your skin's trying to protect itself by turning dark, um, and, help, and the mel melanin is going out there to, to hopefully protect the uh, bottom layer of your skin. But somebody like me, who obviously doesn't have very much melanin, it's so important for me to optimize my glutathione, because 14% of our body's glutathione can be held in our skin. Yeah. And that 14% literally can keep us from being sunburned. It can keep us from sun damage. So I know there's countries like Australia and places where skin cancer is so um, rampant. Prevalent, yeah. Prevalent, rampant. Like it's, all of a sudden you'll just hear like there's so many people. Hugh Jackman has had skin cancer, I don't know how many times. It's eight. really, eight times? Eight times, wow. Yeah, and it's really interesting because, uh, you know, the great showman, the, the recent one that he did, when he had an audition, 
he actually just had to have skin cancer removed just recently and he wasn't supposed to go to the audition because they know that he loves to sing and he was actually going to sing but the director was like maybe you could just come to show face just for the people who are funding the project mm -hmm. and stuff and so I don't know if you guys saw this on Facebook but he showed up and he was supposed to just stand there because he had a huge bandage covering his nose because of the surgery he had just had. And they had a whole bunch of the cast there to sing one of the big songs that was in the show. And a couple of minutes into it, he couldn't Great stop his it. mouth. Yeah, he goes. couldn't stop his mouth. And he started, he took over for the guy who was singing for him and he had a great time. But it's just spectacular because he's Australian and lived in Australia for most of his life. And as a result of the fact that the ozone layer is thinner over Australia and New Zealand, you feel the UV rays, like to the point where it hurts over there. Yeah, absolutely. It's spectacular, the difference. And um, I really wanna just state that it's incredibly important to be aware of uh, sunscreen. The number actually is irrelevant. It's just telling you the chemical content in there. Yeah, you right. only need maximum an SPF 30, you guys. I use an SPF 8. What matters is that you apply that you apply, sorry, you apply it every two hours. Any liquid-based SPF is only good for two hours. After that, it's no good. So set a timer on your phone and make sure that you apply every two hours. And just so you know, the secret to why my skin looks the way that it is is because of the fact that I've been actually using um, a mineral makeup line called Young Blood that I absolutely love, and it's made in the States by a woman called Pauline Youngblood, and she actually has a dry mineral makeup, and she puts titanium dioxide as a, as a block in the um, mineral makeup, and it is literally a stone. And so what it does is it acts like a shield protecting the skin, and because it's a dry mineral product, it sits on top of the skin and the molecules were created large enough that it sits on top of the skin as opposed to going into the pores, clogging them and slowing the cell renewal rate. So it'll actually stay on the skin until you wash it off. So you've literally got this shield. So the UV rays are gonna go to the skin but they're gonna be blocked right off so they're not actually even allowed in to, to cause free radical damage. So it's not important to me that you guys run out and get the brand name that I just mentioned. What matters to me is that you're being aware of the type of sunblock that you're using and getting the idea that the, the higher the number, the more protected you are. And if I have 100 SPF, I can leave it on all day and not think about it. That's really not how it works. And you're loading chemicals on your skin. So uh, do a little bit of research about the different types of uh, sunblocks that there are and how the mechanics of them actually work. Is it a chemical one that's actually trying to counteract the free radical damage? Is it a mechanical one that's actually blocking the UV rays from getting into the skin in the first place? That's actually my preference, obviously, because that way we're not loading more chemicals into our skin. So just keep that in mind um, this summer because the sun is out and everybody's throwing their, their sunblock on to protect themselves from the UV rays and from aging. One of the really great things about the Mikla, V-Size Mikla has Simvital in it. And Simvital is very much like Harmony was describing. It has um, a titanium, it has a, a base in it that's iridescent. So it actually reflects the sun from your uh, face. So, you know, generally it's a, it's a facial cream um, that people put on once or twice a day. But if you're out in the sun, you can, you can actually use it as well. If you're a guy um, and you're out there sweating all day long, it, that's, I think that's what people understand about sunscreens is that when you're out in the sun, you're sweating, then moisture is actually diluting your sunscreen. So whether it's 30 or 100 or whatever it is, it's your, the moisture is wicking it away really fast and you do need to reapply. So... But glutath glutathione in your skin, so it's, it's really one of the first levels of protection. So you think of all the things that our skin is exposed to every day. Just, I mean, we couldn't even list all the things that we are exposed to, but bacteria, viruses, chemicals, it just goes on and on. And our skin is a first defender for us. So, you know, when I'm walking down the street and I see somebody in front of me that's smoking, I'll often hold my breath, you know, just till I get past that person or whatever. Well, my skin still gets it, whether I like it or not. It's still going to get soaked in, you know, there's only 19 carcinogens in cigarette smoke and uh, 200, <laughs> 250 other chemicals that can be harmful. 
But I, I, my skin's gonna get soaked. I can't help it, right? And your hair. And your hair. I oh, my hair that. reeks. Yeah. I can just walk through one cloud, and my hair reeks, and I've got no choice but to have a shower to get rid of the smell. Yeah, you I have can't because it, it stand it. Well, the cadmium attaches it right to your. It, it sticks to the protein. You know, your hair. It's just protein, right? Little strands of protein stuck together. So porous. So porous. Yeah. So the the, the stuff from smoke just sticks to it. Or if you're out all day. Like I live downtown and all the vehicle traffic and so on, you know, it's just something we're exposed to. So it's our first line of defense. So optimizing from the inside certainly makes sense. But now that we've discovered this and we're working on this uh, skin, uh, we, we understand how it works. So now it can, it can come into fruition. It can be uh, made as a product. But the other day, um, I know I told you about this. I actually uh, took some immunity. This was uh, probably about a week ago because I was having a no brain day. I, I tend to like to push myself really hard and I've been relaxing um, to give my brain a break. And so on Sunday, I went out and it was like 9.30 in the morning. I took some immunity. I went and laid in the sun from 9.30 until it was about four o'clock, I think it was, I was relaxing in the sun continuously. I think I came inside for about a half an hour to eat at about two o'clock because I realized I hadn't eaten all day. And then at about four o'clock, I went for a walk and I was probably on an adventure for about three hours in the sun. And then I took another dose again afterwards in the evening. I woke up the next day. So I double dosed. I woke up the next day, no redness on my skin and not even a tan, <laughs> nothing. I was in the sun all day and I got no benefits. Well, that's, yeah, not true. that's not true. I got the vitamin D and it felt great, but I was expecting a little bit of a tan at least. So this is really spectacular because I understand from my own trials that if I optimize my glutathione before I expose myself, my body, internally, my body is going to protect me Absolutely. from the free radical damage that's going to happen when I go out there. And then of course I dosed myself before my body went into reparative mode while I was sleeping. So whatever would have potentially happened was completely sorted by the next morning. So, so I just want to make you aware there's a study that if you go look up glutathione in skin, you'll find this study online that says that this researcher found increased glutathione levels in skin cancer cells. I'm like, uh, yeah, <laughs> I would hope so. Because they're doing the work. Because they're doing the work. Yeah. Right? So I was not creating the cancer. I found out something today. I was, I was in a clinic, um, particularly to talk about skin. And I found out something today that I did not know. So people that have eczema, eczema, or eczema, depending on which country or province state you live in, one of those things that really itch like crazy, eczema, um, if you have that, or there's another condition where the ligands actually break down and you get these little bumps on your skin. So they kind of look like a hive, but they don't itch. They're not aggravated, but you can get them all over your skin. And um, so what, what that is, th those things, and even psoriasis, if you get psoriasis, psoriasis is actually where the ligands or the things that hold your skin together have let go. And so those little bumps, those little bumps or the eczema or whatever is actually being pushed out of your skin. So the inflammation is being pushed out and it's using your skin to get rid of the inflammation. And uh, as it comes to the surface, of course, it itches and it's, it's bothersome because it's, it's weeping. It's got uh, serum in it. It's got plasma in it. It's got you know, stuff from inside, but it's actually, your immune system is actually pushing stuff out through your skin. So one of the things that you can do is you can make, you can take immunity right now and you can make a topical skin cream out of immunity. You could take unscented hand lotion that you know isn't going to damn, isn't even gonna cause a reaction in your skin take a packet of immunity, mix it in about two to three ounces of unscented hand lotion and make your own skin cream because it has the amino acids in it. They will be absorbed and it is a tremendous help in healing wounds, helping with eczema, helping with psoriasis. Um, and if you have spots like I do right on my forehead here, um, that are benign, but uh, they're, we watch them all the time because uh, there's family members in my family that have had skin cancer. So we watch these all the time, but literally I will take, I will take some immunity, just dab and actually just rub it into these little spots up there. And um, 
So they're healthy. I have no idea why they're so red, except that I have a whole bunch of Scottish English background and that just seems to go along with it and uh, the red hair thing. So, but yeah, we watch these all the time. People will ask me about these spots on my head and, uh, and just so you know, I do watch them and I put glutathione on them. And um, <clears throat> every once in a while, um, I have a little psoriasis that will come up. I have a little spot on my thumb here and it came up three days ago. And this cameraman, that's too small to see, but if I could have showed you, like it was peeling. And if anybody knows what psoriasis is like, it's like flaky, it can itch, sometimes it doesn't itch, but it can itch, but it's just chunks of flaky skin. And um, I just took literally immunity powder and rubbed it on my skin like that till it, till it rubbed in. And there you can be the Nice. Yeah. That's no, amazing. There's no inflammation left in that wow. spot. Wow. Right? Uh, there's the other spot there that was coming up at the same time. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, there's no inflammation. It's in, like, and what was the time frame on that? How oh, quickly did that work? So it takes about it takes about five minutes to rub it in. Like you just use So you gotta have a little patience. Have, to have a little patience. Yeah. Watch your TV show and rub it in. Rub it in. Yeah. And um, and I, I just did it once. Literally, I just did it once and the itching stopped almost immediately and then the redness and the inflammation just disappeared. Mart so. Narvo said, Alan, what have you done? I notice you look younger and you're smiling and your energy levels are really high for seven o'clock at night. <laughs> Where can I get that energy? Peace in. I think he said, I think that was supposed to be peace out. Peace out, man. So that's really interesting <laughs> that he's noticing that you're looking younger. I keep saying that he uh, he's Benjamin Button and he's aging backwards. Yeah, so so Martin happens to know that I am trialing a glutathione skin mask right now. And uh, so thank you for the compliment. I'm glad you noticed. It is, it's really an interesting experience to, uh, to actually make my own and put it on my face. Um, and one of the things, that when you do the skin mask, it tightens your skin like... <laughs> I look. I look like I could. I'm coming from the zombie apocalypse. So apocalypse. That's it. Because <laughs> it tightens your skin, and so then it makes your eyes kind of stick out and makes them look a little red. It's really fun, actually. <laughs> Come on, late at night, and then I go outside. I know I don't. Um, but um, within, like, I make this mask, and within three or four minutes, you can literally feel your skin tightening up. Um, so we're we're trialing that right now. It's a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying it. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, have some really awesome news for people very soon about that. Um, anyway, back back to the skin cancer thing. I really want to talk about skin cancer because I know there's people here on this uh, feed from Australia, New Zealand, uh, other hot places, uh, California, um, just uh, uh, now Peru. We've got people that uh, immunity was approved for sale in Peru, and uh, so. Skin cancer. So th this is where if you go to PubMed and you start reading about it, there's lots of confusing information. First of all, um, they're using molecular glutathione. And yeah. I want to make that clear that they're using the wrong thing. They're completely using the wrong product for treating um, an exterior condition. In fact, we've, we've had companies that uh, like have actually um, have a, an amazing reputation and have created all sorts of, you know, create like just spectacular products that actually blow my mind as a skin therapist um, as to what they're able to do in treatment in spas and stuff like that. And they they played with molecular glutathione and turned back to us and said, "I'm sorry, we can't do anything with this. We've tried. And yeah, it, it I mean, doesn't it, work. It, it, so it, we've had it scientifically played with. Yeah, on our like on our own time. Kind yeah, of thing. four four months, four months of it." And uh, so, so, you, so we know that. So just keep that in mind when you're reading uh, about that. And when you read something like, you know, glutathione elevated in skin cancer cells, that, that's actually your body doing what it should do. Um, it's really trying to fight off uh, whatever uh, is causing that. Um, so many skin cancers are actually exterior to your body. I just want to make that clear to you. They're on the surface of your skin. So they're not a melanoma, which is in your skin. Um, so they're on the surface and they, they can be treated very effectively by a topical application. And I was reading about this today and then, as I said, I was at a place where we were talking specifically about skin and cancer and we were talking about 
you know, using um, what's called the FFAT method, preform amino acid therapy method, um, and they are highly in favor of using that uh, as, a, as a treatment modality for uh, skin cancer. So uh, once again, every cell in your body has the ability to make glutathione given the ingredients that it needs. Uh, it's not like your liver can only do it or you know, some other organ. Every cell in the body has to be, has to, has to, I'm gonna say that again, has to make its own glutathione in order for it to be a healthy cell. So it has receptor sites on the cell membrane that capture those amino acids and then there's selenium that triggers a response. It's a genetic response in your body that takes those amino acids and there's two enzymes that kick in and you get glutathione at the end of that. So that is a genetically controlled and monitored response to the three amino acids and selenium turning up at the membrane of any cell in your body. Why do we make it in the cell? Well, glutathione is cellular protective inside the cell first. The purpose of a cell is to make energy, which causes free radicals. You can't, we burn oxygen. We are oxygen burning machines. So we are literally combustion engines, if you want to put it that way. And so we make free radicals. That's part of life. We want to reduce the damage or the potential damage of those free radicals by optimizing the glutathione within the cells. We also make protein. So when we're making proteins, we have to expose our DNA, our RNA, our genetic code. It all gets exposed inside the cell and we want to protect that from being methylated or being attacked by a heavy metal like mercury or arsenic or zinc or lead or something else that could be in um, our skin or inside our body. So glutathione actually has the ability to take those heavy metals, make them into water and flush them out of our body. So right inside the cell, that's where glutathione works first. It's the same with our skin. So when we give our skin, our, our skin cells, like Harmony said, have the ability to manufacture glutathione so that they can be healthy. They can be healthy skin cells. And when they're healthy, they have the ability to resist the oxidation from the sun rays. They have the ability to hold moisture, which is really important um, in, in hot, sunny weather. And they have the ability to absorb nutrients much better as well. So we don't often think of, you know, we think, well, we don't often think about our skin, right? Really, but our skin needs like B vitamins, C vitamin. It needs all the vitamins and minerals that all of our other, other organs and tissues need. Yeah. And so it has to have the ability to absorb those things as well. So a healthy skin cell really translates into a much, much healthier body. So healing from in and out is a really good thing to do. Our skin is also a detoxifying organ as well, if you think mm -hmm. about it, which is why we deal with things like acne. And, you know, we have to realize too that we're losing a million dead skin cells every 40 minutes at our peak. So, you know, just get comfortable with the fact that you're breathing each other's dead skin cells because that's a thing. Um, so because of the fact that the body is... Yes, yeah, so your teenager is not being lazy. He's just sitting in the corner exfoliating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's very busy. Yeah, he's very busy. There's a lot going on. <laughs> but it's really, it's really interesting because you guys, you know, when you look at your teenagers and you look at all the acne that they have and everything, there's a reason that that's going on. And it's because the hormone levels are so spectacular and and it's really interesting because the acne um production that you'll actually see in somebody who's 16 versus somebody who's in their 30s are uh, the actual root cause of that is completely different so when a teenager you're going to be dealing with hormones and in somebody who's an adult you'll typically actually have acne as a result of stress so your body is actually detoxifying as a result of the you know issues that were created, the inflammation that was created due to stress. Stress will tighten your shoulders, but it will also create acne. Another thing that was really interesting that I experienced when I was in my almost late 20s, I wanna say 26, 27, 28, I was getting random acne out of nowhere in this area right here. And I did some studies um, on Chinese medicine when I was in school because I just love certifications, so I have like a, a massive book full of them. And uh, one of the things that I was studying was that, and they actually link the face to every part of the body. So if you look at this particular area of the face, it's actually connected to the female reproductive system. 
And so at that time, my body was actually going through something in that particular area of the body and it was causing me to have that acne going on. And so when you understand where the acne is being created, you can actually support people. So if people are actually getting acne on their forehead, it's usually because they're eating junk food late at night. Um, it's very, very spectacular when you actually learn the different areas of the body and what it correlates to. And then you can understand why the body is detoxifying in what particular areas of the face it is actually choosing to do so. So, and then, you know, the age that you're in as well. And one of the things that Alan didn't bring up that's really, really spectacular to think about, and the thing that I noticed when I was a skin therapist doing facials on thousands of people, was that the teenagers obviously are just dealing with and being at the mercy of their hormones and dealing with all sorts of sebum production, particularly boys, you know, and getting all sorts of blackheads and whiteheads and acne and oh, it's so much fun. In your 20s, um, there's still, you're very much in your prime. So you don't have much to worry about. Your skin is perfect and you're just trying to figure out how to keep it that way. And if you can actually just allow your skin to do what it's doing and just nurture it a little bit, you know, it's really the best that you can do. Keep it hydrated, exfoliate a couple of times a week, keep your skin moisturized, protect it from, from damage, and you're good to go. In your 30s, the physical damage that you've actually done to yourself is going to start to surface. So sun damage, alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, all that rest of that kind of stuff, eating junk food, that stuff is actually going to start to surface on the exterior and you're going to start to see some consequences, let's put it that way. You look like a chicken nugget. And well, it's, a, it's really spectacular because I actually found that my friends that were in that age range, the ones that hadn't taken care of their bodies and it had consumed drugs and alcohol and done stuff like that were aging hard. Yeah, you can tell. And yeah. I was still looking spectacular and there's a reason and it's because I don't smoke, I don't drink, I've never done drugs, I eat healthy food, I don't like putting poisons in my body and I take really good care of my skin. So my body was not detoxifying any of the stuff that I put in my body because there wasn't, it was just the regular detoxification through involuntary exposure to toxins, right? So then when you hit 40 and beyond, I started to notice that all of the people that were in that age range and beyond, who they are on the inside, I'm talking about the person that you are on the inside, starts to become your exterior. Yeah, absolutely. That starts to surface. Absolutely. So, I really want you guys to understand that this is scientifically proven that 10% of how you age is intrinsic, which means genetic. 90% of how you age is extrinsic. 90%. Is that like nine zero? Nine zero. So when you're like, oh, my mother had kid skin or my dad, whatever, means nothing. Shake weights, nothing, okay? It literally, like 10%. I want you guys to understand that you have so much control, which actually is spectacular. Because if it turns out that your mom and dad had crappy skin, it's, it's going to be okay because it means nothing. If you think about protecting your skin and you think about being a really good person <laughs> and you do the work that you need to do and you think about minimizing your toxin exposure, and then optimizing your glutathione internally and then playing with it externally. One of our amazing people that's actually in our audience today was actually just saying, Robin, I have successfully topically used granules from immunity as well and it worked very quickly, which is really, really spectacular. If you do all of that, you can age beautifully. It's about aging smart, not anti-aging because I'm sorry guys, but you're on the planet and it's going around the sun and we can't reverse that. So, but realize that your age is only a number and that is all that it's dictating is how long you've been on the earth and how many times it's been around the sun. And Alan is a beautiful example of how you can be more mature in years have been on the planet for a little bit longer and optimize your glutathione and literally turn the clock backwards and really, really repair and allow your body to produce healthier mitochondria and allow your skin to produce live, juicy, healthy, plump, rich skin cells and support your body being able to detoxify itself with less show of damage and stuff. So you're not getting all these breakouts. I get all these people that are complimenting me on how amazing my skin looks. 
And it's because of the fact that my glutathione is optimized. Yeah. So I don't get a whole bunch of breakouts and stuff like that because my body has no need of it. It's, it's detoxification system is optimized. So I want to talk, I, I want to talk a little bit about drugs and yeah, drugs. Let's uh, do it. Let's do it. Party so, on. If you have been on chemotherapy, know that chemotherapy is largely excreted through your skin. So if you've been on chemotherapy, it would yeah. be really good to optimize your glutathione and get that out of your skin. It does stick in there, so it would be really great. Optimize your glutathione, get that out of there. If you've been on, if you were a kid and had acne and they put you on anything with retinol in it, or vitamin A. So they used to do that. They would give people this really, really strong vitamin A cream that would literally burn their skin and try to burn the acne out of it. It's really what they're trying to do instead of telling them, you know, not to eat certain places. But um, that actually is oil based and you still have that in. If you're if you did that as a teenager and you're like 45 years old or 50 years old, one of the things that I hope happens for you is when you optimize your glutathione, you get a rash on your skin because what that means is it's actually excreting that leftover retinol that's still stuffed in your skin. It's not doing any good at all, but it's oil based and you can't get rid of it. So it'll push, glutathione will help push that out. There's so many other drugs. Antibiotics are often excreted through the skin. Um, anything with zinc in it, anything zinc based is excreted through the skin. And, and hair. And hair. You can taste it and, and smell nails. it. And nails, yes. Um, so there's, there's a lot. As a matter of fact, if you were to go through all the drugs, uh, if you're on anything for epilepsy, um, most of the epilepsy drugs are actually excreted through the skin. So there's a lot Remember, as Harmony said, it's the largest organ of the body, has the largest surface area of, of your exterior. It's not the largest surface area, that's the inside of your intestinal tract, but it's a large surface area, lots of water hopefully flowing through it, so the body does use it a lot to excrete things out of you. And, um, you know, lots of people talk about, um, you know, they take garlic for a cold, and do you know why? You don't get a cold if you take garlic? No. No one will come close to you to give you a cold. <laughs> so we know that there's lots of foods and spices that are excreted through the skin as well. Which just really all that tells us is how integral our skin is to our overall body health. That we can actually take cayenne pepper and you know eventually we, we, we can tell through our skin or we can eat garlic and we t can tell through our skin that we've actually consumed something like this. just tells you how integral your skin is and how important it is as something for excreting things out of your body. I think people think a lot about the fact that the skin is a protective organ. It's on the exterior, so it's protecting us from things invading. Um, but there isn't a lot of education and understanding as to you know how the body actually supports and detoxifying things from our body as well. So That's it's right. really important you know to to understand that. And I mean, I've always understood that from a young age, and so I do the best that I can and, and have before I understand, understood glutathione um, that I didn't want to put poisons in my body. And so I chose, you know, a little bit higher end junk foods and <laughs> I looked at alcohol as poison. So when my friends were going out drinking, I was like, feel free to, you know, mess with that. But I mean, it's going to make my hair not look as nice. You know, and if I got a headache, I wouldn't take anything for it because it was going to mess with my beautiful silky hair. So I went to bed instead of taking, like I, I knew about this kind of stuff, right? So I've, I've done everything that I could to avoid uh, putting those poisons in my body. And I don't know where the awareness came from that, if my mom told me at some point or something like that. But, you know, obviously doing the best that you can to avoid um, taking the poisons into your body is absolutely fantastic but like you said I mean if you're in a situation where you've you know been diagnosed with cancer and you've had to do chemo or radiation or something like that I mean the situation is completely different you're fighting for your life 
And so really the best thing that you can possibly do is optimize your detoxification system and your body does detoxify in multiple ways. And glutathione, fortunately, is in control of all of that. It is the master controller of all of that. Yeah, you've, ne you've never had a rash until you've had a radiation rash. Yeah. There, there's nothing like it on the planet. Uh, when that radiation bounces off your bones and comes out your skin and causes a rash, it's, uh, it's not pleasant. Let's just say that. And uh, so you definitely want to get that out of your body and glutathione will help you do that. So um, if you've had anesthe anesthetic, anesthesia of any kind, even dental anesthesia, um, there's a couple of places where we store anesthesia. First is in our brain, because that's where it goes. Uh, and our brain is essentially fat. So it's very fat soluble. Anesthesia is very fat soluble. So even though they've woke you up, and you think you're awake, you still have anesthetic. It stays in your brain for a long, long time, depending on your age. Whoa. The older you are, the longer it stays in the fat in your brain. The other place it stays is in the fat in your skin, especially if you're a woman, because women have an extra layer of fat in their skin. So, um, it, I actually didn't know that at all. I've never been knocked out, thank goodness. Well. With yeah, no, I've never been knocked out. <laughs> with an anesthetic. Yeah, I've never been knocked right. out with an anesthetic. I've blacked out before because of anemia or low blood pressure, but that's really spectacular. So you're saying that the older that you get, the longer the anesthesia will actually stay in your brain? Yeah, absolutely. So it's one of the, it's one of the things they don't, you know, drugs have a half-life. And so, you know, they'll say, well, it's got a 12-hour, 15-hour half-life. Or lots of times you'll go for a light anesthesia, go for day surgery, and they'll say to you, you know, sign here that, you know, you admit that you're going to be inebriated for 24 hours. Now, you don't feel inebriated, but you are inebriated because of the anesthesia, uh, because it does go into your, even if you're getting something else done, it could be your knee or it could be something on your back or whatever, but, or some uh, day test that they're doing, uh, colonoscopy, gastroscopy, um, you're going to be inebriated for 24 hours minimum. But the older you are, because her metabolism is slower, the longer that can be. So my mom had to have surgery. She fell uh, when she was in her 80s and she literally crushed her pelvis, shattered her pelvis and crushed five vertebrae. And so they, they did some surgery on her. Now they just did local anesthesia to reset this and, and brace it because you can't really do, you, you can't set your pelvis. You just have to let it heal, heal itself. But her vertebrae, they wanted to stabilize that and they gave her a local epidural. And obviously she was like, she was drunk for three weeks. Wow. Because it went to her brain, right? And it takes a long time. So, you know, I didn't know anything about optimizing glutathione at that time, or I would have immediately had her doing that. Um, and how but, else do you go about detoxifying that? I really, I mean, it's, it's glutathione is it. That's it. That's it. That's, that's it. Like, uh, that's one of the things I get. I often get a kick out of people doing a bowel cleanse and a this cleanse and a that cleanse when, you know, really glutathione is the thing we need to keep our brain clean and, and, uh, you know, I used to do all of that. Yeah. I used to do colon do. cleanses, candida cleanses, liver cleanses, colon, like I said, colon, all of the cleanses. I used to do all of that kind of parasite cleanses, heavy metal cleanses, like everyone that I could possibly think of. Cause I have a mother who's morbidly obese and I was doing everything that I could to try to figure out how to have a healthy body from a position where I had absolutely no freaking clue because I had a horrible example of what health looked like. And so I just thought that if I did all the cleanses on a regular basis and stuff like that, that I would be healthy. And if I tried to eat healthy, but what I didn't realize was that I was actually being symptomatic about trying to deal with my health. And it took so long, but finally I discovered glutathione and all, that's the master detoxifier. Yeah, exactly. So you can do all those things and people do them and they repeat them over and over again because they never optimize their glutathione. Um, you know, it, it's just a, I mean, this is, I mean, this is the whole reason why we're doing this is to help people understand the necessity and the importance of optimizing their glutathione, uh, not only for your skin, but for the rest of your body. This, this is your, this is your defense mechanism. This is it. It's what controls your defense mechanism, which is what you guys need to understand. Yeah. So if I was to do one of those heavy metal cleanses for say like a month or something like that, buy one of those boxes, would that get the heavy metals out of my brain? Well, 
it's really interesting because I, I went and looked up a, a very current study on Pub, PubMed that did a comparison with, with a, a multi, just a whole bunch of different cleanse products. And the results were so scattered and so unpredictable I don't even know how to answer that question. Wow. Actually. Um, some of them are really expensive too. Some of them are like twelve hundred dollars oh, for a cleanse. Oh jeez, I can't say I could have ever afforded that much as a single mother. Yeah. Right? I mean, like I was but, twenty thirty dollar boxes I was buying. Yeah, so but, I probably wasn't getting great results. They're very common. You go but in, I was proactive. You're proactive. <laughs> right. um, that's but that's true. You go into a health food store and they have um, you know, liver cleanse, kidney cleanse, whatever, and they're thirty, forty, maybe fifty dollars. Yeah, pretty much. And that, yeah, so they did this comparative analysis, and and uh, the results were really, really scattered. And I, I think this is me just saying this. I think the results that they're scattered because different levels of glutathione in people. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so that's you, exactly you, it. Because like, in all reality, if your glutathione is higher, then it's going to utilize. It's going to work better. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Any of the herbs and, and nutrients and minerals right. or whatever it is that's being put into the system is going to be utilized better. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I think that's the that's really the key, and it's really the key in a lot of a lot of things. Is you know when we when we look at population statistics, centarians. We test their glutathione. We find that centarians have very high levels of glutathione, and it's very evident in their functionality. So people that you know have their wits about them, and they're really they might not have as much mobility, but they have brain power, and they you know can they're still doing stuff. Um, they have very high levels of glutathione, and their their bodies would be very clean. They would be very there wouldn't be very heavy met, very many heavy metals, and they probably haven't been exposed to a lot of drugs because they've been healthy over their lifetime. So, um, Mary Lou Westcott is saying that my surgery in July will be my third major surgery in 18 months. I have to detoxify and rebuild and I am. And uh, she's an absolutely spectacular example because she's doing all the things knowing that she's going to have to go into surgery, taking the products that are actually going to support her being able to heal and recover probably at miraculous rates to the point where she's going to be flooring the doctors Especially at what her body is able to do. Too, right. And this is exactly what she was saying. Um, the other comment that I was going to read from her is that I take uh, detoxing very seriously as I've only had one kidney for 45 years now. Yeah, that's a serious thing to take seriously. <laughs> it's a good thing you to take that, seriously. <laughs> well, when I when I went through renal failure, you know, which is I was just thirty years old, so that's not a real great outlook prognosis um, when your kidneys have already shut down once. And so I had to go every five years. No, I had to go every year for five years for a kidney function test, and then I passed, and then. You know, they spaced it out. It was every two years and then every three years. And uh, so I just, I went for my renal function test just to early after Christmas in Jan January, I think it was. And um, that's exactly what they said to me. The, the guy said, are you sure you went through renal failure? I'm like, yeah, I remember it really well. <laughs> but, yeah, I do remember that. It's like asking a woman if she remembers giving childbirth, yeah. like having a kid. Like, I remember being that sick, for sure. I went through exactly the same thing when I was, um, I actually had to have a pap. And the woman was having a hard time finding my cervix. And she was like, well, apparently, you know, if you haven't had a, a baby, it's harder to find the cervix. She's like, are you sure you've had yeah, a yeah. kid? And I was like, mm, Pretty much. I, I have a says he's mine so I think maybe, maybe yeah. it's crazy when people question stuff that is a life-altering painful crazy moment in your life you know are you sure that happened yeah well I, I was actually I took it as a compliment because he said to me I your kidneys are like they're so healthy they're oh I took it as a compliment too yeah for sure <laughs> my body recovered incredibly well to the point where it looked like I hadn't even had a kid so Pretty amazing. Yeah, so I had two, <laughs> two things. I worked in an asbestos mine as well, since we're talking about detoxification and skin. I That's worked, right. That is amazing. I worked in an asbestos mine, and now, you know, mesothelioma is a big thing in the United States. Oh, uh, what? Yeah, mesothelioma. or Try to say that word, guys. Cancer caused from <laughs> asbestos, residual asbestos in your body. That's a really huge thing. There's a mesothelioma class action lawsuit. There's a mesothelioma society. There's a mesothelioma everything because it is such a big deal. But I, I worked right in the shaker mill 
in the asbestos. So it was all around me and we were not masked. We, that was optional to be masked. And so insanity really, uh, when you think about it, but more than that, in the summertime, a, a prime summer job for students would be to come and they would get a vein of asbestos fibers and a pick. The longer the asbestos fibers, the more valuable it was. Oh, so they would literally man. pick it out of the mountain and put it in and bag it. And the more bags they would get in a day, they get paid per bag, right? Oh. And of course, we were way up north, so the, the sun never set. So these guys would work sometimes 20 hours a day, literally like this. Digging at asbestos. Digging at asbestos. Breathing it in. Breathing it in. So after I, after I left there, I had to go for 20 years uh, for chest x-ray and all that kind of stuff. And so because of that... You know, I'm doing my kidneys and all that kind of stuff. And, they, and the guy said, well, you know what we should do? We should do a chest exam too. Because I haven't had one for, for a number of years. And so I'm like, sure, cool. Let's, you know, I, I'm all for it. If you want to test me and see what it's like. And uh, so he was really shocked because, you know, you do the volume, oxygen volume test and you, the power of your lungs and so on. And, you know, I'm like, I'm a 35 year old when it comes to that. So. Um, that's really cool and, and really seriously I I have to give the credit to glutathione because I know where I was when I was 35 where I was when I was 40 when I was 47 and uh, I, I was not a functioning human being at age 47 I was I was done I, I was really looking forward to uh, exiting the planet um, because I just couldn't do anything and I, I had no answer right at, at that time that it's, is almost impossible for me and everybody watching us to believe I know <laughs> I talk to my kids sometimes. It's just spectacular because when we when we look at the you know the man that we've got in front of us, I mean, I go walk the seawall with this man every day, and he has absolutely no problems, you know, walking 10k and going for more. Like he's perfectly healthy, and to think that almost 20 years ago, yeah, you were like done. I was done. That's spectacular. Yeah. I was done. Prognosis was that if I lived to be 60, I would be in full-time care. And uh, I, mean, I mean, they made the point of saying, if you live to be 60, that was the point that they made at the time. And then I discovered how to optimize my glutathione. And, you know, literally, you talk about turning back the clock. You know, I have that physical proof in my organs and in my tissues and in my breathing and in my skin and also I have physical proof of how- And your beneficial. hair. And my hair, yep. Yeah. Winston has known you for my son. He's known you for, you know, as long as I have. And he just figured out how old you are because I mentioned it. And he was like, what? <laughs> I thought he was like 40 something. Oh, that's fun. I was just like, I was like, how do you not know? Like, I swear I thought I'd mentioned it or whatever. But like, my son was absolutely shocked. He's like, how is that even possible? Like, he looks 20 years younger than Papa. It doesn't make sense. Oh, that's cool. Who's Thank his you. grandfather. <laughs> so, so yeah, so... Anyway, we came tonight to talk about skin. We got talking about a bunch of other stuff, but it's all, it's all important. It's all relative. And it's, you know, really, if there's only one thing you're going to do in your life, optimize your glutathione. Yeah. I mean, seriously, optimize your glutathione. You have to use amino acid. You, you can't use glutathione. It's, it's clinically impossible. And if you want, like this, this is one place where the internet really sort of aggravates me or gets under my skin because there's so many people promoting glutathione products. You need to go to PubMed and start reading about glutathione. And you will read there the side effects of molecular glutathione that have been identified. And remember, we're not selling glutathione to people. We're selling, what we're promoting to people is amino acids that enable your body to make its own personal glutathione so we're it's enabling we're not healing we're not curing we're not treating we're not doing anything other than giving your body nutrition so it can do what it needs to do it will take care of the rest it will literally it'll do healing it will do that it's not what what we're doing it's your body that's just getting the nutrition that it's scavenging for right now and can't find you know when people have chronic illnesses they're scavenging for the nutritional components to make their immune system. They're scavenging for that. They're not getting it from their diet. They're not getting enough at any one time. And you can't get enough from it at, at any one time. So they're scavenging. They're just, their body is just struggling to optimize their glutathione and get rid of that inflammation. 
get rid of some of those toxic materials. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's beyond sort of re, rejection now that free-form amino acid therapy is the methodology. It's what nature does. There isn't going to be something better come along. I don't think we can improve on nature. No. It's uh, been around for 3.5 billion years yep. doing, doing this, so it's probably pretty well established. But And it, the thing that's really important to understand is since the very first you know molecule existed on the planet, it actually had glutathione in it. The first living thing on the planet, and glutathione has evolved into a tripeptide in order to be able to yep. protect life. Every single living thing that has ever been on this planet had glutathione and has glutathione in it. Your animals, your plants, you, everything has glutathione and needs glutathione to live. It is the protector of life. It is the molecule of life. It is the molecule of life. Yeah. It is, it's so spectacular. You know, a lot of people have, haven't heard about this word and, and so they don't understand what it is. But just because it's a new thing and, and you know, it, it's potentially a new trend doesn't mean that it hasn't been around for literally ever. Ever. <laughs> anyway, so so a little bit for you guys to think about when it comes to different aspects for practical uses for glutathione uh, or for the precursor amino acids to optimize your glutathione. Feel free to experiment and you know put your immunity on some different. Just for you guys that don't have one of these boxes at home, this is what we're talking about: is the immunity, and it's a lot cheaper than a twelve hundred dollar cleanse, and it's significantly more effective. Um, but you can absolutely experiment on it with uh, different sunspots or eczema or psoriasis or any of those kind of things that Alan was talking about. If any of you guys have any questions, you're more than welcome to message us on the Glutathione uh, Facebook page and we're happy to get back to you. And please feel free to share this video. And we will be posting it on YouTube as well on our Glutathione Authority channel as well for anybody who's not on Facebook and wants to get access to this video or you want to share it to people that aren't playing on Facebook. I just have one last comment. Yeah. For, for our friends in Australia and New Zealand, I know you're going into winter. This is a perfect time to optimize your glutathione and repair your skin. This is a perfect time and get prepared for next summer. Oh, so Mary was saying question, so if immunity helps your body to make glutathione, is it a waste to take more than one serving a day? No. So, so Mary, to answer your question is, we don't have a convenient method right now to measure glutathione, We're working on that. Um, but the, because you're using amino acids, the amino acids, if, you're, if your system was optimized, the amino acids would just be used elsewhere in your body. However, research tells us that most of us, even though we're doing our best to optimize our glutathione, there's certainly periods of time in our life, and you're coming up to surgery, you're gonna need more glutathione than you have up to this point. So absolutely, um, keep keep taking it for sure. She said, can more immunity make you make more glutathione? Absolutely. absolutely. The more amino acids that you give yourself, especially when your body is in reparative mode, which your body is going to be, um, it's, it's very important. And if you want to get a little bit more details as to how to support yourself leading up to uh, during and post surgery and stuff, you're more than welcome to message us and we can, you know, talk you through it and give you a little bit of, you know, personal support because you absolutely deserve it. You've been on the path and you've done an amazing job and you're such a trooper and such a great example. And we really appreciate you being, you know, a consistent example of, you know, how to take care of yourself and how to come back from, you know, having a really huge physical barrier. You know, you're just spectacular. So we totally got your back. Yeah. Anyway, have a great week, and we'll see you next, oh, next week is a holiday. Is next week a holiday? It is. We won't be around on Monday next week. It is the May long weekend in Canada and the United States. Oh, all right then. So we'll see you guys in two weeks. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.